This is William Tincup and Ryan Leary. You are listening to the You Should Know podcast, and we're going to be getting into the state of employer branding with James Ellis. And uh, James is not opinionated, and so it's going to be kind yeah. of a kind of a vanilla gonna, show. So yeah. hopefully, you can stay tough, away for it. Tough to get this guy to talk. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Some guests we have talk a lot. Yeah. Others, yeah. it's like pulling fucking teeth, and I'm kind okay. of feeling. No, this is this is going to be that. It's, this is going to be. You, you wrote down a bunch of questions, right? So, James, would you do us a favor and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I am James Ellis. I uh, all I do is employer brand. People are like, well, what do you do for fun? I do employer brand. Uh, I have a nine year old, and I do employer brand. End of list. We're done. It's thanks for playing. It's the, that's the whole kit and caboodle. I write about it. I talk about it. I build it. I launch it. I educate about it. I excite people about it. Hopefully, I entertain people about it sometimes. And you know. It's what it to me. It's the lever that's going to make all of TA better, right? I have this feeling that no one actually likes hiring. No one actually likes the model by which we hire. <laughs> that's the candidates, the hiring managers, the recruiters, the bosses. Nobody actually likes I what we're that. doing every single day, and right. yet we go, "Let's keep going. Let's keep trying this thing." You're like, Nuh. and so to me, you know, that's hot. Yeah, it's, that's, hot. Yeah, that's delicious. I smell steak. What are you doing? I, I think that's I'm delicious. I think employer brand is the lever that kind of pulls us out of the rut. I'm not going to say employer brand solves all things. It is not magic fairy pixie dust. It is not the thing you sprinkle on your toast to make it magically delicious. Right. It does, however, change a lot of the math and a lot of the thinking and allow you to say, what if there is some other way? Maybe, God, I hope so, please. Jesus, let there, that be a thing. Oh my God, why? <laughs> um, and that's why I do it. I care about it because I've been in jobs that I loved and jobs that I loathed. And from the outside, they look exactly the same, same job posting, same career site, same recruiting language, same hiring manager question, same interview process, the exact flip and same. Now, that said, I also don't believe that there's any such thing as a bad employer brand. I think that if you're Goldman Sachs and you want to work your entry level people, 100 hour work weeks, that's great. So long as you're crystal clear about that. Fine and apparently sure. if you do that and offer them a pile of cash at the end of the rainbow, the line forms to the left. There's no problems hiring people. Not that's fine. Don't tell if, me it's a bad employer brand because it's if clear. That's, if that's transparent. Yeah. It's all about clarity. And that's the thing I, you know, I look and, and we can get into a whole rant about recruiters who I adore and everybody thinks I hate, which I don't get about that. It's recruiters lack credibility, not because they're bad people, not because they're trying to lie, but because the industry they're in has forced them to say a whole bunch of horseshit to get the job done, to put the butt in the seat, because that's what they're measured on. And they just, okay, if that's what the job is, I will do that job. And that's not really what the job needs to be. And that's why employer branding is going to change some of that math. So my name is James Ellis. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Thanks for playing, everybody. Drops Mike. I'll use your line. Drops Mike walks off stage. We're done. That's it. Hey, great that's podcast. Okay. Yeah. I got to go that's reshape it. my head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'll take, I'll take, you want me to take the first one or you got one? No, I was just going to say, do you use the razor or do you use a, <laughs> uh, a, uh, like skull shaver type thing? Oh no, it's straight. It's not a straight razor. God, I'm not a pirate. Yeah, um, I, I, use, I, 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 yeah. Use yeah, a sword? Normal, <laughs> normal razor. Yes. But I just recently got the pit bull shaver, skull yeah. shaver. I don't know if I like this. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I feel it. I feel the little, the little. What stubbles. was the employer brand on that? Like, what, what, what brought you? <laughs> what brought you in? What made you think yeah. you yeah. like that? No that's, yeah. that? That's just good advertising. Trust me, I get those ads on Instagram all the damn time. It's like they have a camera, or at least can see all my pictures. And there's AI yeah. that says that dude yeah. needs a shaver. Yeah, and, yeah. It's like thanks, guys. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> First question out of, out, of, out of the gate for me is auditing an employer brand. You've done this a thousand times where you look at something. People want that independent, objective viewpoint on their, on their brand. And, of course, you're going to have to tell them at some point that their baby's ugly. Okay, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time <laughs> out. Look, I don't know where – look, I was at a job, and I'm not going to name names this time. Because you and look I had my. I am a teddy bear. I am a cuddly gummy bear. You're like, you're like the bear. Jim Cramer of employer brands. That's exactly, no, that's exactly, that's exactly what I thought. I swear to God, that's exactly what I thought. Is he going to throw stuff? Oh, God, he gonna he's going to give his bad advice and we're all going to go fucking broke. Yeah, okay, I need a button. Give me a big ass button. Maybe that's what I've been lacking this whole time. Um, uh, yeah, look, here's the deal. There, there's this feeling that 
employer branding is about telling the boss their baby is ugly. And I, I, I don't know where this came from because that's not actually what's happening. I've had a boss say, hey, that you, you're doing great work on employer branding. We're going to go present your work to the CEO. So what we're going to do is we're going to hire a consultant to read it out because I don't want you to be associated with the person right. pissing off the CEO. And I went, well, I'm not planning on pissing off the CEO. My <laughs> job is not to say the baby is ugly. My job is to say piano lessons. It, it, it Okay, look, I don't have to say your baby's ugly. I just have to say that is not its its finest hour. That is not right. where it's strongest. I it's would say a, a cooking large. classes, you know, <laughs> you know, elocution lessons, whatever the hell it is. There is a place where every company is strong and right. offers something of interest. There is a lid for every pot. Saying there is a good brand or a bad brand is total bullshit. And right. that is how bad consultants try and get work. They make you feel bad so they can squeeze the juice out of the lemon and that juice is money out of your pocket to say, I'm going to you know, make it look better. I don't want to make an employer brand look good. I want it to be clear so that the person who's been waiting their entire flipping life to go, yeah, I want that, to see it and say, Girl, have you been all my life? I want some of that and not, well, shit, it's just yet another job. It's a yet another job posting. They made it so easy to apply. I can do it with my elbow. Boom. I did it next. And it's like, that is not how it works. So no, I don't want to, I, I want to kind of reject the premise of the question that it's not about baby ugly. It's about <laughs> clarity and strength of message, not good or bad. So they just pulled- to- Point they for clarification. Kevin O'Leary on you. Talk about oh, him. No, no. Oh, dude, that, you dude that I love back, that. Sir. Dude, Please. I love that. I, you, are you kidding me? Canadian? How dare you? They're nice. They're really no, nice not people. that one. Not that no. one. He, he no. could use a lesson or two. Most, most are. So the words authentic and genuine – are you at this point, is it a drinking game or are Just you about. a buyer? More on the authentic one. I haven't heard genuine nearly as much. Right. I think in terms of credible. Yeah, authenticity. Yeah, authenticity is an absolute buzzword. And if you've hit bingo by now, congratulations, drink up. <laughs> Be uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I Yeah. But it's about credibility. It's about showing what you care about. And that's the thing right. is that I think – you know, places that do a lot of research, they say, oh, like, you know how every year Pantone says the color of the year is chartreuse. And you're like, <laughs> cool, that is not useful information. But for a day, it just fills my flipping feed everywhere I go. Okay, yeah. whatever. I feel like there are companies who I will not name again, and I used to work for one of them, who say, okay, this year, the watchword is Work-life balance. The watchword is opportunity. And everybody goes, like, baby Huey or, or lemmings. Okay, we're all talking about opportunity. That will go to opportunity. And we'll talk about opportunity. Like, well, do you actually offer any special opportunity? No, but everybody wants opportunity, so that's what we're going to give them. It's like, no. Who are you as a company? What do you offer your candidates? What do you offer your employees? What do you offer people? Just because right now it's all about sushi and not sweaters, it doesn't mean the Gap's selling sushi anytime soon. They don't go wandering around just because the fashion is what the fashion is. They know what they're about, man. So be what you're about. I am mentally exhausted already. I'm not Enjoy. Alive. This is my head Dude, 24-7. No, I, I, I am. 24-7. That's why I shave it to let them, let them out. Just get out. Yeah. So I know, I, I know we're getting – Oh, go ahead. Yo, go ahead, Ryan. No, I, no, I know no, we're going to no. get into the state of employer branding. Yeah, we are already. At some <laughs> point. Before we get there, how does an employer know they've got a problem? Oh, oh that's a good how question. How do you show up on their doorstep? I would love to be able to show up on my doorstep on their doorstep saying more about you look like everybody else. That right. would be to me the perfect situation. Yeah. That if I cover up the logo on their career site and I go, Whose company is that? And I love to do it with pharma companies because literally you can take the top 10 pharma companies, cover out the logo and like, yeah. I get that you all like the color blue <laughs> and I get that you are really big on saving lives and innovation. I also get the fact that there's nothing else you're talking about. So here's a problem. And that usually kind of gets the ball kind of going. But really what they come up to me about is, hey – we don't know what to talk about. We don't know what to say. We don't know what's out there. We sound like everybody else. We have a brand awareness problem. We can't get people to apply. The funnel is running dry. We're spending more and more and more money running ads that, by the way, look like everybody else's ads. Gee, I wonder why that's a problem. And we can't make things happen. And so I'm, I do hear most of our clients come in and saying, look, the challenge is we don't know what to say to get people to show up. And the truth is it's not because they don't know their lines. It's because they haven't done the work internally to say, what are we about? And that's really where the, the good employer brand starts. What are you all about? 
there's a line somewhere I read in, I can't remember where it comes from, but if you choose to go north, you're choosing to not go south. If you choose to be all about opportunity, you cannot also be about support. If you choose to be about one thing, that means there is inherently a negative to that. What is the opposite of that? And companies are so terrified of saying anything bad, of saying anything that might be negative that they say everything positive and they end up thrown in the kitchen sink about every possible nice thing they could say. And that's, and that's when the employee gets on the job and goes, this isn't what I yeah, signed up for. Yeah, because the, so, the, the reality of it is, what are you really offering people? What is your company there to do? What is the purpose? What is the, the dent it's trying to kick in the universe? What are you there for? How do you help co employees find their way? Look, let's boil it down to the, the brass tacks. Candidates only care about three things. What is the mission and purpose of that company? What is the experience of working at that company? And what do we get when we get there? That's it. Everything else is just philosophy. And the truth is you don't have to be different at every one of them, but you do have to be different at at least one of them. So if you're the Wild Wa World Wildlife Federation, you don't have to worry about the experience. You don't have to worry about the reward because the mission's the thing. People show up for the mission. We're good. That's all, all you're talking about. Goldman Sachs, not about the mission. It's about the reward. It's Pinterest, it's all about the experience. They treat their people really, really well. Some people, the experience is not about support. Some people, that experience is about what they learn and about who they engage with and the status they gain out of that. The reward could be professional development. It could be career ladder chain. There's so many things you can offer, but you can boil it down to those three things. What's our mission? What's the experience? What's the reward we get there? And if companies can start to boil their thinking into simple terms like that. Get away from EVP pillars, which, you know, are, are, they're great if you're Disney or AT&T, but if you're every other company that doesn't have 4 billion people working for it, keep it simple. What's, what is the goal? What is the experience? What is the reward? So something that whips my ass is the whole, bring your whole self to work. Oh, yeah. Okay. So first of all, you don't, you don't, you, you don't, don't want, want the whole, you don't no. want the whole William. No. <laughs> There's yeah. too much darkness yeah. that's there. You don't, <laughs> you're, only you don't about, want... you're only getting about 60% of my saltiness. Let's just, <laughs> that, if that scares you, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. exactly. So how does that translate to employer brand? Because I've seen the same thing about the not wanting to put things in negative. Like mm -hmm. our CEO went through some type of scandal, et cetera. Like <laughs> we're not going to talk about it. Like yeah. it didn't happen, but in a simple Google search, yeah. it's going to kind of come yeah. up. It, sure, it shows up every third glass door review if anybody <laughs> still does those anymore. Yeah. It's like, so oh, it's like, look. So if we just avoid it, uh, yeah. then maybe it didn't happen. I'm like, yeah, that, that's, why don't you not just talk work. about it? Yeah. Why don't you own, it, own the story? But again, you're you're the professional here. So uh, well, like, let's not let's not call names here. Um, <laughs> so, first thing. Yeah, exactly. You're right. That's that's unlikely. Yeah. Um, the thing. Look, the thing is, is that companies exist to make money. Right. I don't I, I don't know why I feel the need to explain that, but a lot <laughs> of people seem to think that that's not true. And so the companies, especially when they're trying to put those fig leaves on to cover up the fact that they exist purely to make money, they right. throw on these shirts that say, oh, we care about our people. No, you care about your people insofar as it allows you to make money. Hey, we care about the environment insofar as it avoids having to have horrible lawsuits where people realize, hey, you're destroying the environment and that <laughs> costs you money. Like everything is about money. And I think right. that authentic, authentic authenticity, bring your whole self to work is this self, it's the self-help book of the week that businesses read that they said, oh, oh, oh we're supposed to, it's chicken. No, not the chicken soup one, the other one where you're bringing your whole self to work where you can talk about it's okay to be gay at work, which of course, when businesses say, bring your whole self to work, that's really what they're all they're saying. It's okay 100%. that you're brown or black or whatever, or gay yeah. or whatever particular flavor or variety you are, it's okay. Shut the hell up, but it's okay yeah. that that exists. <laughs> oh, hold on, work. hold on, hold on. We'll throw an ear at you or an ear G at you. That's fine. That's checking the box. We're good. Get, Get back, back to, work. to work. Yes. And that's the thing is that when, when you, when you have these conflicting ideas that literally violate the purpose of a business, you get this insane friction that we're living in now to say, what is the purpose of this business? We're trying to achieve this thing. How are we doing it? Why are we doing it? What's the reward? That's really why it boils down to that. And authenticity just is throwing, throwing sand in the gear works because that it, it, it's, it's not helping. It doesn't drive any of those things. 
All right, we, we could ask a million questions here. But oh, yeah. And we will. The topic, which we'll still ask questions and we're going to cut you down. Sure. Oh, you want to get back fair. to the topic? The topic? There's a topic? State of employer branding Playoffs. in 2020. We talking playoffs? We talking practice? <laughs> Dude, That's still the best. The never best. gets never gets old. No, Sorry, it will never get old. It will never get old. And he just kept going on. Yeah, he on. just kept going. Practice? One of the comedians, one of the comedians, did the bit of Allen Iverson, but he did it in Morgan Freeman's voice. Oh, wow! Oh. Wow! <laughs> practice. <laughs> We're talking about. Practice. You know, I it, mean, genius like level. You, like, oh my god! When you think about it, it is just probably, like I get yeah. it. The Michael Jordans yeah. of the world and all, and, and Ivers has even yeah. said like, if I practice, if I took care of my body better, yeah, yeah well, I would have been that much better. But I yeah. was already great. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I changed the game. Yeah, I didn't care up. about doing that, right? Anyway, shut up. State of employer branding in 2024. Kick us off here. Where are we at? What comes to mind when you hear that? It, it really is about we've made it so unbelievably complicated that you, you don't hire an agency. You hire a guru who comes off from a mountaintop and reads your tea leaves and the entrails of the duck that they killed in front of you. Hopefully it was a virgin duck. I don't know how this works. So this I is how you end up on the yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, commandments. And, 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 and what they end up with is the same crap as every other company, but it's dressed up really nicely. And you go, yeah, here's $80,000. Do more of that. Um, that is the state of employer branding. It's gotten so snaky to tail. It's gotten so, how do we make this more complicated to make it more expensive? It's gotten so messy. Now, if you understand how employer brand works, that is, it's a means of it's a force multiplier of recruiting. It makes recruiters' lives just that much easier. I did not say easy. I said easier. I'm not an idiot today. So it's just about, let's, let's just say the rule of thumb, it makes a recruiting's job 10% easier. That means if you've got 10 recruiters and the choice is, do I hire an employer brand or I hire another recruiter? It's a pretty fair choice. What The outcome is relatively equal. If you have 20 recruiters, you absolutely invest in employer brand. But if you've got four it makes no sense. You ha so you hire more recruiting, and so you end up just kind of reinforcing this idea of this. You know, it's it's a it's a, a brute force model. Hand, you know, find more people, beat them up with spam messages. Focus, focus, focus. Beat them up, and then just put the butts in seats. Employer brand is there to say it's not about more; it's about better. It's about saying, do not spam everybody. F build a relationship with the five people you want to talk to. Give them a reason to talk to you. Give them a reason to listen to you. Give them a reason to engage, and they generally will. They will listen to interesting conversations. They will listen to our interesting arguments. And ultimately, that's what your business wants. But none of the pieces are arranged such that it's driving that. And so and ultimately, what we say is spend a lot of money on employer brand, slap it on a recruiter. Let's not even train them on what the hell it is or how to use it half the time. You hand it to marketing and say, build some content. The recruiter goes, that's cool. How does this change my world? No, not even a little bit. Okay, that sucks. And they go off and keep doing it. And they wonder why we keep doing it. It makes no sense. And I, the number of conversations I've had with leadership who say employer brand is a scam, employer brand is bullshit, employer brand is is a, is a lie because they had a buddy who was a CHRO or a CPO or a CMO at this other company and they bought it and they spent $80,000 on it, it didn't do anything, is testament to how bad our industry has gotten about this stuff. Now, I'm not saying everybody's bad. Right. There are really no. good agencies and really good people doing the work. The problem is there's such a strong demand for employer brand that either you either hire the agency for an insane amount of money or you promote your social media kid and say, well, you're doing such great work on the Twitter. Go ahead and do the same thing on LinkedIn. And we're going to call them that employer brand. Make some pretty pictures. Make the, make the sexy words happen. Make it all look good. And hit, the, hit the art button. Yeah, art. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, here's your Canva account. Go nuts, kid. Have fun. Uh, bro, well, it looks like every other page. How weird. Um, and employer brand is not about pretty. Employer brand is about different. Define, and I'm going to harp it on this. I think I've said different so many times. The drinking game has killed people. It's the number of times. It, but that's what it's about. It's about how do you show you're different. And the state of employer brand is... It's time to turn the boat around and say, enough with the craziness, enough with the really expensive EVPs that sound like everybody else's EVPs, mm -hmm. enough with taglines that say nothing. Let's talk about 
what does a candidate need to know to make a decision? If I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying different, but you're also saying realistic to the company. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, a, it's those two things. Yeah. So it's yeah. not just different. You can be different, but if you're still a far away from the actual employee experience. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, okay. if you want to put a chicken outfit on and stand outside in the street, that's different, but it's not <laughs> useful. Okay. It's not, unless the job is we're going to sell, you know, car washes and tax rebates and you can stand on there. Look, that's not about you. That's just right. about being different for the sake of being different. And honestly, just doing that would be nice because it right. beats every kind of, hey, we're hiring post I've seen you know, dozens right. of times every day on my LinkedIn feed, which is just why bother? It'd be better, but truly the, the way to go is clear about what you offer, clear about what you offer a candidate they care about, talk about that. I, so I would love to see someone do this in their LinkedIn profile picture. Hmm. We're not hiring. Yeah. Like do the end. <laughs> Do the do the opposite. Just yeah, go. Opposite. Yeah, we're not hiring. You oh, can't. I'm, you can't get a job here. Uh, that would be amazing. And that would be, I, like I can immediately see a campaign that says we're not hiring. We're finding quality people. Like that's, that's right. that is such an easy kind of like. I like that. I, so yeah. every once in a while, I get air, bored in an airport, and I'll say, "Hey, I got two hours to kill. I'm in an airport. God help me." And I ask people to post on my LinkedIn comments. Send me, show me the job you're trying to hire for, and I will write your social media post for you just to avoid four more we're hiring posts because that's what they were going to write anyway. Right. And it's so much fun to yeah. kind of say, look, there's so many ways to attack this. I've done, I've done everything from a project manager for a construction site to a bar manager at an F1 style bar coming out in Boston to, I mean, it's, it's all over the map. And the truth is there's so many interesting ways to talk about work because work is fundamentally interesting. We have boiled it down to such horse crap that I don't know why we're bothering anymore. It's we're just the we're hiring the join us, the great opportunity bullshit does not work. And yet we yeah. continue to generate it in bulk. Do you, do you think there's a, do you think these companies are trying to be different and I'll, use the air quotes here. They're trying yeah. to be different because the pressure from external marketing firms or agencies that they're using says, you need to be the next Super Bowl commercial. You need to be that unique in your presentation of who you are. I don't think that's really what's happening. So look, yeah, I don't think they're being unique at all. Or yeah, exactly. I, no, no, I don't think they're, but do you I, think think it's, I think it's a march there? to sameness. Yeah. Do, do you think the race to the bottom is the, the pressure from these firms who really have no clue? No, I think the pressure is financial. That because yeah. recruiting hasn't figured out how to point to the pile of money they are generating or saving a business, because again, businesses are about making money, not about making friends, they get cost centered squeezed, even though they are absolutely the generator of every single penny that business has earned. They right. don't know how to talk about it in those terms. So consequently, they are used to finding cheaper and cheaper tools and cheaper and cheaper systems and cheaper and cheaper people and cheaper and cheaper. And that is the race to the bottom. Yeah, There are incredibly, incredibly smart recruiters who think in employer brand. I mean, I always joke that really good employer brand is usually just the natural extension of what a re good recruiter would do if they had four and a half seconds to stop and think for a second, right? It's not rocket science. It's mm. just saying, hey, what do people want? How do I offer it to them so they're really interested in it? Duh, it's not complicated, but we're so, hey, here's 47 recs. You're expected to put 100 applications in each requisition. Otherwise, it's a failed rec, but we're measuring on your numbers of funnel size. We're measuring on your numbers of speed. Like It's nuts. And the truth is, if we just say, what's this company offering? How is it different? The people you'd want to hire will show up instead of the applications you wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole if you knew what they actually were. All right, I got three questions. You can take them any way you want to. All right. One is, you talk to a lot of practitioners that are employment branding specialists. Do they feel that it's a winnable game? Ooh. One question. Two, if you were building an employer branding tech stack from the ground up and money wasn't a problem, mm -hmm. what would you build? Three, what's your take on generative AI and employer branding? Those are really interesting and diverse questions. So like the next 30 minutes of conversation, we're just 30 no, here now. No, no, no. <laughs> I, you, don't take, you, you, you don't have to take any. I'm right. It's got three. It's good. Yeah. All right. So I think practitioners don't think in terms of, is this a winnable fight? They think of it in terms of a calling. I think the people who have, oh, sure. who are so, yeah, they're so insane to take these jobs. And this is why they're insane. This is why we're absolute. Anybody who's a good employer brander is an, is an absolute lunatic. And this is why. 
What is an employer brand? It is the summation of everything a company does to its people. Okay, so that's um, everything a company does. But the employer brander is responsible for shaping and presenting that, but has exactly zero authority over it. <laughs> what? Who takes that job? What insane person says, I want all the responsibility and none of the authority to make any of those changes happen? Yeah, okay. sign me up. Take Do that, that hill. You have no tanks or guns. Yeah, oh, you, okay. here's, here's three toothpicks and uh, and, 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 and a... And a, and a poker chip there, MacGyver, go nuts. Um, that is the state of it. And so the people who right. show up are true believers. They see that this is an open space where marketing hasn't nailed down all the rules yet, that there's a lot of opportunity to try new things. There's a lot of right. opportunity to kind of talk about the story of the company in a very interesting way. And it can have real value, can, doesn't always. And I think that's why we're, we're so excited about it. We've, we've, we're in this weird spot where we found this little bubble of interestingness that most businesses have no clue what it is, and that's a pro and a con. And so we're just trying to figure out what is employer brand really and how to make it work. So most people would love more money and would love more resources, but we don't expect it. So we're just kind of like, let's just do the best possible work we can and hope that history kind of you know values us down the road. I don't remember the second question, so I'm going to jump to generative AI. I love AI because it's not generative. I think the generative part is almost secondary. I think everybody looks at what ChatGPT does and says, ooh, it's going to write my job posting. And I am more than happy to say that is the dumbest idea I have ever heard. <laughs> have, you, have you read anything that thing has written? I'm sorry. It's like a vaguely smart 10-year-old, okay? It barely understands what's going on. It's making shit up left, right, and center. It's not a good idea. And I get that you hate writing job postings so much that the idea of letting a slightly smart 10-year-old do it is actually kind of a win in your head. I get where you're coming from. It's also a horrible idea. And if you haven't talked to Kat Kimmon about that, Kat is the master at all things thinking of job posting. And uh, they have plenty of things to say. What I see AI as, the real value of generative AI, is not that it writes content, is that it sees from a static perspective, right? Let's say I'm going to do an audit on a company and I'm going to review five of its competitors. I'm just me. And some days I'm a little salty. I don't know if you noticed it or not. And I have bad expectations or bad feelings. And, if, and as a human being, those things color and bias what I'm seeing. If I have high expectations for a company and they, they fail, I hate that company. I hate that brand. If I have low expectations and they overcome them, I really like that brand way more than I should. That's a natural human thing. If I can ask an AI to look at content in a framework that makes sense and review that content and consider that content, it is a static point. It's not having a good day or a bad day. It's not James yesterday or James tomorrow. It's not even a James. It's not a boy or a girl. It's not anything. It's just a static point. And it can have a far more objective opinion on what's being presented to the world, digest it in a way for me to say very quickly, okay. I understand that these four companies are all talking about X and Y, so we should talk about Z. So I'm still going to own the strategy, but the information it can pull out to give me a lay of the land and screw five strategies, five competitors, let's do 50. Yeah. It's not much harder. And it gives me a really tight map to say, okay, and let's be fair, in a talent market, we're usually not talking about five competitors. We're talking about 50, if not 5,000. This is a much better way to say, this is what everybody's talking about. So if we want to win, these are the steps to take. I think it's incredibly valuable for that. So I'll just put that out there. I don't remember the second question. Well, Ryan's probably got a couple. We'll get back to it. Oh, what was it? It was the Gen AI was a second. Gen AI was a second. Yeah, well, I know what the question was. It was about your tech stack. If oh, oh, the tech brand stack. Or... Oh, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. a tough one yeah. because – If you could build it from yeah. scratch and money wasn't a problem, what yeah. would you build? I want to hear this one. Is, this is a really hard question. Look, so I'm, I'm – I guess I'm technically a solter, solopreneur, so I'm used to using solopreneur tech stack tools. 100%. So ConvertKit, Otter – um, I'm trying to think what I'm using. Circle sometimes, Podia for class. There's, there's so many. There's just been – the last two years has been an absolute tsunami of very simple communication, content marketing, and content management tools to help a one-person business do stuff that five years ago took a big team, right? You just need it. And right. I think if you boil down employer branding and how it helps recruiting, it's about defining the message and telling the message, improving the message. Right, Riverside is another great, we're using Riverside right now to record this, mm -hmm. another great tool to collect content. I've been using that for two years, 
love it. So to me, it's not about what's the most expensive tech stack. Would I love to use HubSpot? Maybe, never actually used it, heard great things. But to me, it's about what are you trying to achieve? And that is really kind of funny because employer branding over the last two years has spent so much time trying to list the litany of positive outcomes it makes on a business. We help retention. We help marketing. We help investment relations. We help this. It makes it slices. It dices. It julienne's fries. It makes your teeth whiter. It's fantastic. You won't even polishes that leather. It's fantastic. It does everything. And consequently, we sound like crazy people who don't know the value of what we're trying to do. And I think when your company thought about, we need some employer brand, they had a problem they were trying to solve. Did it solve the problem? And I would build an entire tech stack around that is the problem to solve. Because until you do that, you're just the magic fairy pixie dust. You're just the stuff you sprinkle on to make things magically somehow better, even though that never works. And you get crushed. If you're focused on solving a business problem, you can win. And that, and I would build a tech stack around the business problem, not, about, not around employer brand. Walk us through the difference between employer branding and employee branding. For those that are listening that may not. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a good really one. Really kind of get the idea there. And I may what? be one of them. I feel like that's splitting a hair <laughs> that doesn't need to be split. Look, an employer brand is what someone that here's the, here, let, let's get in some very simple terms. Employer brand is not something I own. It's an idea that exists in other people's heads. When you think of Nike, you think of a certain thing. When you think of Adidas, you think of a certain thing. When you think of Hoka, you think of a certain thing. And what I think of and you think of and you think of and you think of is different and we're all correct. So that's a brand, employer brand, any kind of brand. My job as an employer brander is to influence that by creating some structure and some architecture, like a lever to kind of shift things in the direction I want you to think. That means I have carte blanche and all the things the company says or does or you know, touches to say those are the potential levers. And one of those levers is the employee themselves. I want them to say not nice things about the company, but to talk about the things that make that company different from their perspective. Look, I don't know Jack about data science. I don't know Jack about biochemistry. I don't know Jack about being a nurse. I don't know Jack about being an electrician, but I want my employer brand, my idea, my concept of what that employer brand is to be translated through their experience, through their education, through their thinking, to talk to audiences much like themselves who I cannot reach because I am not them. I want to use them for ads. I'm a big fan of advocacy over ads every single time. And I think if we're talking about the difference between employer brand and employee brand, that is where the difference is. And I say, why are we drawing these lines between them? The truth is it's a means by which we help prove the story we're trying to tell to the market. How do you explain recruitment marketing and employer branding to executives? It, the same way you explain marketing and branding from the other side of the fence. Okay. There are two big ideas. Marketing is the act of getting someone who's already interested in you or in market, I guess, is the technical term for it. Like they're, they're looking for a toilet. Guess what? They're ready to listen to your toilet ad. Yeah, I right. said toilet. I said it twice, in fact. <laughs> Here we are. But up until the moment that you need a toilet, when you is the last care. time you thought about a toilet? Other than, thank God it's there. Yeah. You, don't, you don't know what the difference between Kohler and a Toto and a whatever the brand is. I don't care. I don't know. That's branding. Branding says, how do I insert or even incept, which is really the fun stuff, an idea, an emotion even if I can, that connects to the brand that is so subconscious you don't even realize it's there until the moment you need a toilet, in which case I am top of mind. So re recruitment marketing talks to the, let's call it 5% of, of the market who is actively sitting on Indeed or LinkedIn or God help us, zip recruiter to look for jobs, to do the thing. They're ready to look for a job. Recruiters know how to find them. Those people have raised their hands. Recruiters, every recruiter from every company said, there they are, I'm going to get them. And that's why they have to spend so much money because they are targets. They have painted targets on their back and recruiters are ready to go. My job is to speak to the 95% of the audience who is not looking for a job right now. So that when they do look for a job, I want to work for that company. Of course I do, because they offer me X or Y or Z, because they're known for this thing. I have inserted these ideas so that when they're ready to take action, they're there. That's really the definition of the, the difference between the two. I have stumped the panel. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I, like, I, I like what I'm hearing. This, you know, it's, so I'm interested to get your take then. 
where do we go from here, right? So I hear what you're saying, right? I've, I've followed your stuff, right? I've, I've heard what you said. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. But where do we go? Where do we mm-hmm. go now? And how does an employer know, one, I've got a problem. But two, how was I, how, when they go through this exercise, how do they know they've done well? Is it just because people like them now? And how do they know? Yeah. This no, is the no, old no. argument of the ROI on EB. Yeah. yeah. yeah and ROI is, a, is tough, except it is and it isn't. So if you think about ROI as, do I make everybody like me? Yeah. Look, what's the, R, what's the ROI of people just liking you? Yeah, I mean, what's, not, what's the ROI of having a friend or I've a never parent known. who supports you? Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 inf- it's right. infrequent. Um, I'm sure there's value, but how do you measure that? You don't. However, it's invaluable. We all know that. Right. So really the value and how you measure EB, which is the que- was part of the question, not the full question. I get that. Mm-hmm. I think of the value of EB as how does it create change? Right now, if you're a company right. and you're doing the brute force of re- approach to recruiting, you're putting butts in the seats, you're spending the money on ads, you're spending the money on every job board you can find, you've got all those LinkedIn seats, you've got, you're doing all the stuff you're supposed to do, God help your tech stack, you're spending all this money. And if you looked and stood for a second and looked at the timeline, you go, we are spending more and more to get less and less. Mm. That is a problem. That is a squeezing too much of the lemon. The more you squeeze that lemon, the harder it is to get each you know, next drop. It's utility, you know, utility theory, right? Basic macroeconomics. At some point you say, doing the same thing, which by the way, is doing the same thing every other company does, is not working. We have to make a change. And that's where talent strategy shows its, its delightful head. It says, how do I maximize the resources I have to achieve more. Do I arrange them in a different order? Do I spend in a different way? Do I structure my team in a different way? Do I tell different stories? Strategy is simply, how do I achieve more with what I have? And when a company hits that moment where they go, if I look in that direction, I see we're spending more to get less. And I know that that line doesn't change directions in the future. I'm screwed. I have to change something. That becomes the inflection point in which you say, we need to think strategy. An employer brand is a big part of that strategy. It's about what do you come to market with? How do you tell that story? So to me, the that way you value employer brand is, do you make that inflection point? Do you spend the same and get more? Do you spend less and get more? If a recruiter, you know, if, or if a team of recruiters spend X amount of money and X number of ad dollars to hire a certain thing, an employer brander makes each ad more effective, you can calculate that save. If an employer brander lets you tell better stories and you don't have to go to agencies as often, you can calculate that save all day long. Here, here's my favorite. What is your offer rejection rate? And you all have one. And if you're, your head of HR should know it off the top of their head and it should keep them up at night. Right. If you tell a good employer brand story such that it is the ad someone clicked on. Ooh, you offer support, a supportive environment. I love that. Click on ad, click apply, show up to the inter- interview. The interview questions show that support. The career site shows that support. The glass door reviews show that support. During the interview, the candidate asks questions about how, what are the, the benefits packages and you see that support. Okay, now guess what? You believe something about this company. And let's be fair, as a candidate, there's almost no information that is completely credible short of the dollar figure and title and start date on the offer letter. Those are the only concrete pieces of information you've gotten. Everything is conjecture and bullshit and opinion and spin and sell. Got it. If you have been told support, 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 or innovation, 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 or opportunity, opportunity, whatever that is, and you get to that offer letter stage and they say, look, we know something about you. We know you are here for support because that's the ad you clicked on. And we know that is what you've been looking for. And we hope by now you've seen how much we care about support. And that's why we're thrilled to make you this offer. You have just reframed the entire conversation from what's the dollar figure to what do you want to do with your life? And your offer acceptance rate will go up. Now, take the number of offers not rejected times it by $8,000, which is the average cost per hire. Show me the money there, baby. Show me the money. No one ever thinks about that number, but that is real savings for a business. That's how you think about the impact it makes. Where does it make an inflection along the timeline of what you're doing now? Two questions. Your take on the state of career sites. <sighs> A. B, the concept of an employer brand should equally attract and repel. Yes. Okay. So the answer to two is absolutely not even a question. Okay. Um, and I just keep it simple. I'm there too. There is a lid for every pot, which means there's plenty of lids that don't fit you, and that's fine. 
and like that's Tupperware car fine. cabinet. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> The real question, the career sites are interesting because career sites are this tent pole of information. It's the place where companies spend the most amount of, inf- amount, amount of money, the most amount yep. of time. Uh, they're crap. And this is why they're crap. I presume you gentlemen have been in the process of actually redoing a career site. You've seen the sausage mm-hmm. get made and oh, you yeah. know that you bring in the head of marketing and, or somebody from marketing who got suckered in this conversation. You got somebody <laughs> from comms, you got somebody from legal, you got a couple of recruiters, you got a recruiter, marketer, you got some of TA, you got some, you got, da, 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 and it's a whole big conversation and no one has any power to say yes to anything, but everybody has the power to say no to something. And so what you do is you see this long line of people who say, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. And it becomes this massive compromise of a compromise of a compromise. Now, if you're the owner of this project and the head recruitment marketer who is expected to use this site to do most of your lifting, you're like, oh, no, this sucks. And you don't, you don't release this site you push it out the door and hope that no one notices. You, it, it, you, you, don't, you won't even escape. It's built in shame. I know. It, it's everyone. It's every single career site. Because eight too many on this. We're going to launch it at Friday at 12 o'clock at night. God help us all. Yeah. It's like pretend this. Look the other way. And so when you do that. Yeah. And when you do that, you go, I never, ever, 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 ever want to do that, that again. No. God, I wonder why it's been eight years since you've touched your career site. God, I wonder. Now, to me, it's interesting because a career site is is structural. It is what everybody could agree on. It's the fundamental principles displayed as boringly as possible. Compare that to your social, which has exactly one lawyer and one 26-year-old social media kid in charge of it. They have z- almost no oversight. So long as they're not saying Hail Satan or Baba Booey or whatever they're not allowed to say, <laughs> they can say whatever they want and they do because they're expected to fill the space. And they're like, I don't fucking know to say so i'm gonna say it's what the hell and so you've got these two contrasting spaces this very conservative very boring hasn't changed in a while structured site and this beating heartbeat of what people are thinking about now now together they provide a very interesting communication experience but the truth is the best career sites are the ones that see those career sites as living breathing things who do not say who are willing to say i will accept every compromise to get this out the door knowing full well the second the door closes and it is out all those people leave the room and you can do whatever the heck you want Sorry. and so those people build mm-hmm. great career sites and that's why great career site tech stacks are the ones that allow it you the the manager the owner of that site to make changes easily quickly as right. much as build as much content as you want because that's where the real value happens got a great cms on the back end of yes. it so that they can just make pages make landing pages make blogs make videos build it up connect the dots tag it left right and center all good stuff but a lot of the big name career site platforms are very are associated with agencies right. and the way agencies right. make money is they say i'd love to make that change it will be $200 an hour and by the way we brought three people in the room so it's 600 bucks an hour just for the intake call thanks for playing i wonder how they make so much money i'm sorry did i say that out loud i apologize we're not recording are we no, no, good no, <laughs> i got one more ryan what do you got I, I want I wanted to dig if we have time dig in oh, all day let's go nuts dig, dig into career sites what makes a what makes a good career site and I and I'll say this I I can see us getting to a point of a career site literally is just a, a page right like we don't need to go super crazy and the other example where you were explaining you have one social media person and a lawyer yeah that's your career page that's Kinda your is. That's what it is today. But when does that actually happen? When does a company go in and say, my, yeah, this, my is, question this was is where we're going? But I was going to ask, do you foresee a place where it's personalized to the job, to the job seeker, to the candidate? Like they go into it looking at one job and all of a sudden they have a, a complete different experience than everyone else. So it's similar yeah. to Ryan's. Yeah. I, I, ultimately, the best employer brand is not the best concept. It's the best expression of that concept. And the way you measure that best expression is, do I understand it? Do I believe it? Can I foresee myself in it? If you can hit those three check boxes, you've got a great com- communication structure. Now, in order to get a message, I don't think you can write a message that both a data scientist and a nurse can both go, I got you. I love it. 
Right. I don't think it can be done. I think there has to be some level of personalization. I think, however, when you say that, people start to cover their wallet because that sounds really flippant expensive. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't have to be. So I'm a big believer that you should be building content not to fill space, but to create these very individualized doors into the brand. When I was at Groupon forever ago, we built all these people pages. And I want to say, how fast can we make, there's 600 6,000 people in the company, how, do, how fast can we make 6,000 profiles? Because the guy in Spain who's the sales manager, I want his story. I want the Australian support team member. I want her story. And I want the executive in Chicago. I want their story. And because of that, I know I can find more people who are Spanish sales leaders and I can find more Australian support people and I can find more executives because they go, that sounds like me. That looks like me. That feels like how I approach the world. I want to learn more. It's the doorway into this broader brand. And once they kind of see that as the frame and say, okay, that's how I should see it. They can look at other people's content and kind of see it as proof rather than explanatory. So there's ways of doing it without having to drive, you know, a, a truck you know, full of cash to somebody's house and say, please build me this crazy site. We did it with WordPress and I spent 500 bucks mostly on stickers just to thank people for doing it and to keep the ball rolling. I could I happily show the receipts, but that's how people absorb that information. It's how they find it. It's how they engage with it. Should it be personalized? Yes. But do you need to build a personalization structure? No. And I suspect the way AI is rolling we're mm -hmm. about to see about a year from now a point where even an idiot like me can kind of say, build code that does this, 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 and it builds it for me. And I install on a WordPress, sure, Webflow, maybe platform that hosts that code and hosts that site. And even an idiot like me can build something a little more directly personal. I don't, I think this, right. this massive code shift is about to happen. And I, I don't think we're quite realizing it. That's that. That's part of it, James. This is amazing. You never disappoint. Well, when are we going to start recording? I was going to get excited. Oh shit! We never hit <laughs> pre-show. Yeah, this is the warm-up. <laughs> Welcome to the green room, everybody. That's the podcast. The green it is room. Oh, there you go. I wanted to there start a go. podcast called "Why Are You In?" What do you do in employer brand, and what was the trauma that led you to this job? Like that was the name of the podcast. Like that was the thing I wanted to do because I knew I could get anybody to show up to that show. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred oh. percent. Let's do it. Let's... James, thank you so much. If you're listening, subscribe, like us everywhere. Say hello when you see us out. We'll see you next time.